my name is Mandana White and I'm the CEO of Smart Grid Forums. And today I'm joined by Mohamed Radi, who is the Network Data Modeling Engineer for SIM at UK Power Networks. And Mohamed will be speaking at the IEC SIM Week 22, uh, 2022 conference in March. And he's here to give us a little insight into the work that he's doing at UKPN around the topic of the implementation roadmap for SIM. So welcome, Mohamed. It's great to have you on the channel today. Thank you for joining. It's a great to talk to you too. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Mohammed, let's start at the beginning. Um, in terms of, you know, when UKPN uh, started the, the SIM journey, what were the main drivers for integrating SIM-based models within the UKPN systems? Uh, what problems needed to be solved? Um, so, currently, uh, the data uh, within UKBN is held at uh, a system level, which means that we have different systems that have uh, specific purposes, such as uh, the management of assets, uh, planning purposes, operational purposes, or, for example, providing the geographical locations of assets. Now, taking into consideration uh, different system functionalities and data categories, they may functionally hold different values and data types when describing an asset. Uh, one may refer to the maximum operational rating of the asset under specific conditions, uh, whilst another may refer to the asset IDs, for example. Therefore, um, taking data um, from systems for any purposes, purposes such as um, uh, analysis or populating other systems can be uh, problematic without a full understanding of the data being used. Uh, at the end, we can call it a consistency data issue uh, uh, when comparing outputs from one system to other systems. This issue includes also populating or exchanging data with external systems or external stakeholders. So based on uh, these issues, we believe in the UKBN that the electricity network operators, including ourselves, uh, need to go through various uh, transitional stages to formulate an effective business landscape. An example of these stages could be, for example, adopting digitalization to transform uh, how they operate as a business, enhance the services that they provide and improve uh, um, how they engage with their stakeholders. Uh, the other stage could be transition from a DNO to DSO to uh, efficiently maximize the use of their networks and enable the connection um, of the maximum amount of low carbon technologies. Um, finally, we can say um, openly share their data within uh, 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 or with a wider energy sector to help facilitate and accelerate the achievement of net zero through enhancing a new third party products and uh, services. So um, to support all these drivers and stages, there is a need for accessible, uh, consistent, integrated and common data uh, um, strategy within the corresponding systems to facilitate an e efficient data exchange internally and externally. Um, now, the volumes of data required and the time horizons of this data, for example, real time or across it from real time, will require significant investment in the data landscape. Also, besides exchanging the data, we are looking to publish openly specific data sets, such as, for example, the LTDS in our case. The shared data must be easily understandable and usable uh, to the receivers of the data. One way to achieve this which means the public publishing and exchanging data uh, is to provide the data in a common format. Based on uh, that uh, direction, the UKPN uh, will adopt, we are actually intending to adopt the IEC's common information model within our systems and um, in, within uh, our strategy and within our operation. So I believe, um, those are the main drivers and motivations behind um, adopting uh, the SIM strategy uh, within our systems. Mm -hmm. And so what are the lessons that you've learned so far that you think could help the rest of the power grid sector, both for their internal and external data exchange purposes? So um, as mentioned before, um, um, the Currently, currently, the network data is held at a system level, which means that we have different systems that have different specific functionalities and data types. 
And in order to perform any use case that includes any data exchange or data publications within uh, or with the other systems, we need to make sure that we have a solid unified network model. So we had two options and we learned two lessons mainly from those two options. Uh, the first one was uh, populating each system separately and supporting it with a modeled common data format, basically same profiles. Um, this might be a good approach for the network operators in providing common data sets. However, it might not solve the issue of data consistency internally, which would require applying or integrating the SIM approach at a higher level, in another meaning within a master management solution. So what does that mean? It means option two, which is developing a central consolidated view of our data to ensure consistency in its use. So we term this as our unified network model, UNM, and we intend that this will act as um, a single source of data or truth for our internal and external stakeholders or internal and external systems. Of course, this master system is expected to be updated regularly based on the IEC standards and the SIM profile extensions in which would uh, support the scalability uh, objective. Mm -hmm. So I believe those are the main um, two important lessons and uh, options uh, that we learned until now from the journey towards um, achieving uh, or applying SIM strategy within our systems. Uh, now, uh, Mohammed, what's the end goal for your project and what's your perspective on the future contribution of SIM? So, um, as mentioned before, we are intending um, to design um, um, a, unifi a unified network model uh, to achieve mainly um, five objectives in general. Mm -hmm. uh, we are adopting the SIM strategy as uh, we're adopting SIM as a strategy uh, within our systems and uh, within our policy, if I can call it, mainly to achieve those objectives. Uh, the first one we can uh, term it as accessibility, which also comes through uh, the recently launched data portal. Mm -hmm. the data um, are made discoverable uh, to internal and external stakeholders through suitable data ca cat uh, categ uh, categories and glossaries. Uh, the reliability is achieved uh, within the context of data governance framework. Uh, so the data are stored in a consolidated and centralized data store that we call it enterprise data model. Mm -hmm. uh, the third objectives uh, that we're looking to reach is the intro, uh, interoperability, uh, which comes through the publication of data in accordance or um, in accordance with the accepted, accepted data standards. Um, the scalability is, is, is one of the most important objectives that we are trying uh, to reach, uh, which comes through it, which could be achieved by continuously updating the ability of UNIM, our unified network model to integrate future SIM standardized profiles and extensions. Uh, the last objective that we aim to within our, which is a kind of a long term objective for us uh, as a DNO or as a community, DNO community, is to contribute towards making SIM data and uh, uh, data types more compatible with the DNO or DSO nature and its data categorizations. Mm -hmm. in, in another meaning, making its profiles uh, uh, more DSO oriented as it is currently more directed towards the TSO orientation. I believe those are the main objectives in general that we are looking to achieve through uh, um, our SEM strategy. Great. Well, we look forward to finding out more about that at the conference in March. Now, finally, Mohammed, what are you most looking forward to um, achieving at the conference in March? What are you hoping to take away? Uh, the most important thing for me in March is to meet the experts, the same experts mm -hmm. from all over the world, exchanging the experiences, exp exchanging um, the project's ideas and the novel ideas that they have. As we know, SIM is a kind of a new topic in the power systems, uh, which is an efficient topic in meeting a lot of challenges and issues in the network. Mm -hmm. And um, the novel ideas is something extremely important to exchange in this uh, field. 
So I'm looking to exchange also experiences with others and taking also from others. It's not just uh, talking through a presentation. Um, I'm also looking to uh, meet uh, previous colleagues also. That I worked with them in SEM just to um, explore their uh, recent uh, um, uh, updates and news regarding SEM and the projects. So I believe it's a, it's a great opportunity to, um, uh, to grow the knowledge of SEM and uh, its links with our um, business and the bar systems. Wonderful. Well, it's it will be the great, um, you know, the perfect place to do that. We'll have all the major um, uh, TSOs, DSOs, uh, suppliers and system integrators coming together for this of conversation course. in March. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mohammed. Great to touch base with you today. You have a great day and we look forward to seeing you in March. Looking forward to see you. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video insightful and enjoyable. We post new Smart Grid related videos every Friday at 12 CET. So please go ahead and subscribe and let colleagues in other departments and peers in other organizations know so that they can benefit too. We welcome your feedback. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them below. Thanks again and have a great day.